Hello, welcome to your living room. It's great to be with you. Um, uh, I know we cannot be in person, um, but we still really appreciate gathering uh, virtually like this each week. Um, you may have noticed I am not Grant. Um, Grant is on a well-earned vacation for the week, but we are blessed uh, in that we have Alan Jock, who is here to give us a message um, from our good God. Um, so uh, I will be doing the, some of the in-between parts that, uh, that Grant normally does, and uh, Ryan will be uh, leading us in, in, uh, in music with Barb, who will be playing the organ, and Narika will be doing the scripture reading. So there you go, you have the whole lineup. Um, just a couple of quick things. Uh, we will be having our Zoom prayer meeting at 11.45, and that will be linked in the email that took you uh, to this service. So 11.45, if you want to join, um, if the, uh, there are things on your mind that you want to uh, join with the community in prayer, it's, it's, a wonderful, it's a wonderful opportunity to be together and to pray together. Um, the other thing is there's a virtual prayer room at 1230, and I would just encourage you to use this if there's something personal that you wanted to have prayer for that you don't want to share with the group. Um, it, it's, it is so good to be prayed for, and there will be somebody there that will be um, offer up your request to God with you. So I would just encourage you to take that opportunity if you are feeling that you need that right now. Okay, that's the announcements. Uh, we are going to dive in to worshiping our God together. So um, the call to worship this morning is from Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. So here are these words. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for who you are, that you have made this good world, that you are beyond our comprehension, and that you are also close to us, closer than, closer than our heartbeats, that you are in each breath. We want to honor you this morning. We want to worship you. We want to love you. So help us, help us to worship you this morning and to look to that bigger picture. Thank you for your love in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will now invite Ryan to lead us in our first hymn. All right, thank you, Joanna. We're going to sing together. This is hymn number 680, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. So I invite you, wherever you are, uh, to stand with me, and the words uh, will appear on the screen. Savior leads me, oh, the fullness 
fullness of his love, perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit clothed immortal wings its flight to realms of day, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. Thank you. And please be seated. We're coming to one of my favorite parts of the service where we get to confess uh, to our God uh, that we're not perfect and that uh, sometimes we fail. And I just love that God invites us to this honesty with ourselves and within our community and with him, um, that there are things that are broken in us um, and that we need his love uh, to heal. So I would invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have said things that are hurtful, that embarrass us, and that we regret. We have not offered kindness and grace at moments when you would have. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct us what we shall be. That we may do justly love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And now hear these words of assurance of forgiveness. As you have come to God in repentance and confession, may you experience the fulfillment of God's promises in these moments and in the days to come. For the Lord has spoken to us through Paul, saying, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. It is now the time in our service where you're going to pause the video and below you hear Grant say this week after week but below the video there are some links and those links have been especially chosen for this service and so I invite you to go to those links now and if you have children with you there's a children's song and even if you don't have children with you that children's song is always really good and we often start with it in our house because it gets you moving um, and it's wonderful so just invite you to pause the video now and um, sing some contemporary worship songs to our God. Welcome back! It's been so long. It's really nice to see you again. Um, we are now moving into the prayers of the community. Um, so, uh, as Grant does every week, I will do now. I will offer up uh, prayers uh, for us, and then I will pause, and you can hit pause, and invite you to pray with whoever you're with, um, and or if you're by yourself, just a good moment to pray aloud uh, to God with the things on your heart, and then I will, and then I will close off our prayer. Um, I should say too, I've adapted um, uh, for the first portion of this prayer, I've adapted a reading from Julian of Norwich. Uh, so let us bow in prayer together. Gracious God, you well know that during our lives here on earth, we experience a wondrous mixture of well and woe. We hold inside us both the glory of the risen Christ and the misery of the fallen Adam. 
Christ protects us in our dying and through his gracious touch uplifts us and reassures us that all will be well. We are so fragmented, afflicted in our feelings in so many ways that at times we hardly know where to turn for comfort. The various pains and transgressions of this life fill our hearts with sorrow and cloud the eyes of our souls. But we cultivate our intention and wait for you, God. We have faith in your mercy and grace and trust that you are working within us. In your goodness, you open the eyes of our understanding and give us insight. Sometimes we glimpse more, sometimes we see less, depending on what you give us the ability to receive. The mixture of sorrow and joy is so powerful that we cannot figure out how to handle it all, let alone assess how our fellow spiritual seekers are doing. The diversity of feelings can be overwhelming. And yet in those moments when we sense your presence, God, we surrender to you, truly willing and wanting to be with you, with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. And in this spirit, God, we come to you. We thank you for the light of spring and the new growth on the trees and in gardens that reveals life coming out of death, your good way. Father, we pray for those who are suffering right now in their bodies and minds. We pray for our church family and our community here in Victoria and elsewhere. You know, God, that many are not doing well as the increasing COVID numbers bring renewed fear and anger and apathy. Bring your peace to our land, we pray. God, bring your peace to our minds the way that you gave it to your disciples after your resurrection. It is a gift that only you can give and that we so desperately need. God, we now offer the prayers on our hearts to you, knowing that you are with us and inviting us to come to you. Thank you, loving Father, that you hear our prayers. Help us to know deep in our spirits that you have made us enough, that we don't need to strive to receive your acceptance and belonging. You offer it freely through Jesus. Help us to be people on this earth who are truly the body of Christ, offering truth and grace, love and acceptance to ourselves and to our neighbors. It is in the name of King Jesus we pray. Amen. I have one more announcement for the children. This is the moment where if you have children with you, invite them to go do something else. Uh, there's things online that you know about and uh, this week again we have an amazing group of people who have been uh, putting packages together and dropping them off at the homes of people that have children and we just love you and bless you and thank you um, and so if you have uh, you should have a new kit uh, for this month uh, the last kit was amazing and uh, just letting you know that this would be a good this would be a good time for for the little ones to to take that on Okay, I am now inviting Narika up to uh, bring our scripture reading uh, from Mark 2, 1 to 12. Hi, um, so the scripture reading today is from Luke 19, uh, verses uh, 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, 
and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Let's do this. All right. Um, hi, church. Good morning, um, everyone. I'm Alan. Uh, for those who don't know me, I hang out here with the youth a lot. Um, if I haven't met you yet, I'd love to meet you someday soon. Um, yeah, um, I work for Young Life. Uh, yeah, this is my first time preaching in front of people, I guess, that are not teenagers. So, yeah, and in front of a camera. So a lot of new things like happening here today. Um, yeah, I'm going to battle through a lot of my insecurities of just being really nervous and just trust God's going to use this message. And yeah, so I'm going to pray to start us off. Uh, dear Jesus, thank you for the moments we're going to share this morning. Um, thank you for the sunshine. That's awesome. Yeah, I ask that you use me to encourage the church this morning through your word. Amen. So Grant asked me uh, if I wanted to preach one Sunday, and my first response was, no way. (laughs) And so I uh, told him what I think any good Christian boy would say. I was like, I'll pray about it and uh, get back to you. But, um, and I did, but, (laughs) and well, here I am, I guess, and uh, we're doing this. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about myself um, I grew up here on the Sandwich Peninsula. Um, oh, I forgot something real important here. I have a wife. <laughs> That's number one. Her name is Narika. She just read the passage. She's awesome. Um, super fun person. Very wise. And I am really stoked and excited for you guys to one day hang out with her um, and get to know her. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I grew up here on the Sandwich Peninsula, um, born and raised. Uh, I uh, grew up in a, a pretty broken home. Um, when I was about seven, my parents split. Uh, I never really heard much about Jesus growing up, uh, other than like a swear word my dad would use from time to time. Yeah, and um, I have an older sister. And a younger brother, so shout out to the middle children, Ben, Ryan, Wu. And, um, yeah, uh, I was off the walls as a young boy. Uh, I would, me and my brother would get into a lot of trouble at school. Um, we definitely had a hard time sitting still. Um, but all in all, I was a pretty happy kid. I, I had an easy time making friends. Uh, life seemed pretty normal to me. Um, in my formative teen, year, teen years, uh, we weren't allowed to see my dad anymore. Uh, just some demons he was battling, and uh, it wasn't a safe place for us to kids to be around him. So going into my teen years, I felt a loss in my life, uh, searching for acceptance in pretty dumb places, putting my identity into kind of being popular or partying or girls or drinking um and all these places i put my worth into or tried to just kept just falling just made me feel more empty um and i know my heart yearns yearned for something more but just didn't know what it was um one day when i was about 16 i was at school hanging out with my buddies at lunch and this older guy came and talked to us and we were kind of weirded out we never seen him before some of the teachers seemed to know him so we're like hey this guy's an all right guy um he seemed super funny loud laugh uh just great guy and um so he uh he then right before the bell rang uh he invited me and my buddies to go play road hockey after school and we hesitantly accepted we're like uh okay 
we love hockey, so let's do it. Um, this guy's name was Jamie, Jamie Kirk, and uh, he hung us. He, uh, we played after school with him, and we had a blast. He drove us home. It was awesome. Played music in the car, sang at the top of our lungs. It was like, okay, that was fun. Weird, but awesome. Um, my mom was kind of excited. That, like an older guy was like investing in me. He like came to my door and like met my mom. So I think that was awesome. Um, and the next thing you know, Jamie was at my soccer game that weekend with one of my buddies. They're just there cheering me on. And I'm like, who is this guy? And after the game, he uh, gave me a high five and said, hey, you did awesome. And do you want to hang out this week? And I was like, okay. And he's like, I'm, do you want to come to this thing called Young Life? And I was like, what's that? I heard maybe some of my friends went to this thing on a Wednesday night, um, but I wasn't really interested. But Jamie invited me, and I thought he was cool, so I was like, sure, let's do it. So Wednesday rolls around, and he picks me up in his Toyota Echo. That thing's a legend. And uh, it was chaos. It was nuts. Um, singing, dancing, games, these challenges, pretty girls, like, it was absolutely the perfect place for a 16-year-old boy. We had a blast. And um, at the end of the night, they settled us down and told us about this guy named Jesus. Uh, I was a little caught off guard, but was surprisingly intrigued. Um, found out my young life leader was a Christian. I was confused because my picture of Christians were... People who judge other people and sit quietly in a church and read, not have fun like like we were having. Um, so I was a little confused. But when I came home from that night, I just felt so full. Something about how the leaders treated one another, how they treated the youth, how they just uh, were living life to the full, it seemed. I don't know. Yeah, and so... Throughout that year, I got to hang out with Jamie. Um, I got to see him walk out his faith from how he interacted with the cashier at Subway <laughs> or uh, just how he cared for his mom uh, or even just how he loved on his friends. Um, Jamie did a great job of just being intentional and consistent in my life. And he just walked life with me. And he made me feel like I was one of his best friends. Um, I then was, was invited to a camp that summer uh, called Rockridge Canyon. It's a Young Life camp out in Princeton, BC. I got to go with Jamie, all my buddies, and I was pumped. Uh, every day was full of fun, laughter. Um, I got to hear the whole gospel presentation um, that week, and we did this thing called Cabin Time, which was like, for sure the highlight it's when you sit in a circle in your cabin and you just talk about your life and what your what your family life is like what your feelings towards this god guy is and who this guy, jesus guy is and um it was really foreign to a bunch of teenage boys we were like this is weird but for everyone it was the highlight of the week um yeah and i got to like wrestle with my young life leader about this Jesus guy and who he was and he just was patiently with me through those questions and through that wrestling um, I got home that week feeling so known feeling so loved I think all my like obsessing about feeling accepted or trying to fit in was just kind of like melted away it seemed like and I knew I was yearning for something, but, like, could it be this Jesus guy? Like, and I think through lots of wrestling, I, um, with my young athlete and praying and figuring things out, I remember it was, like, a few months after camp in my kitchen, I gave my life to Christ with my young athlete leader, Jamie. And, yeah, I do believe, like, everyone yearns for Jesus, even though they may not know it. Uh, this is what brings me to the story of Zacchaeus and Jesus' interaction with him. So I'm going to read again a little bit from 
CTS, or Luke, sorry, chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. I know most of us probably know what a tax collector is, but I'm just so used to explaining it every time I say it with, young, with uh, the youth, so I'm just going to do it. Um, Zacchaeus was hired by the Roman Empire. Oftentimes, they would rip people off or they're known for it. It says Zacchaeus was a short man, so I have a feeling like the Roman Empire knew exactly who they were hiring when they asked Zacchaeus. I think, I'm sure they would tell him, see all these people who made fun of you for being short or your size? See all these people who called you names? See all your bullies? How would you like to get some revenge? How would you like a lot of power over them? So Zacchaeus would walk up to his bully's house and um, say, hey, taxes are a thousand bucks, even though they were only like a hundred. And Zacchaeus would just pocket the extra 900 bucks. And his bullies can't question it because, well, he's got the Roman army behind him and backing him up. And it says he was a wealthy guy, so, I mean, he was pretty good at ripping people off. Um, so people did not like the Zacchaeus guy. I'm going to keep reading. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. Why do you think uh, Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus so bad? I think was it because he was just a super famous guy coming into town, or was it because of the shame or guilt from ripping off all his neighbors all the time, or just the constant rejection? Jesus was maybe his only way out from this lifestyle or this searching for something. Yeah, I think he was, Zacchaeus was yearning for something, but he didn't know what it was. Um, I'm going to keep reading. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, look, look, Lord, here and now I give you half of my my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back four times the amount. That's crazy. That's big. Like, he's willing not only to, like, give away half of his possessions to the poor, but also pay back four times the amount. Like, he's essentially saying he's going to put himself into crippling debt till the day he dies to pay this back. Like, that's a big deal. Like, that's nuts. Sorry. But Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man is, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. I think as soon as uh, Jesus calls the or yeah, as soon as Jesus calls Zacchaeus' name, all his identity, sorry, <laughs> into power, money, revenge seemed to melt away. I think similar to a little bit about my story, I feel like when Jesus called me, when he entered my heart, like I felt like that week at camp, like it just seemed to melt away. All these insecurities or whatever I was putting my identity into being accepted. I was known and I felt loved. I think Zacchaeus here, he was known and he was loved. I mean, my conversion was a little slower, but um, anyway. Yeah, I believe everyone's heart yearns for Jesus. We may or may not know it because of all the, th- all the things we put our worth or identity into. I mean, this isn't just happening to angsty teens or short tax collectors from 2,000 years ago. I think we all, I still fall for this trap of putting my identity into the approval of others. I still struggle with this. I think we all struggle with it, whether it's putting our identity into our finances or our kids or how well they do in life or how well they do in school. Yeah, like having power, wanting approval, needing all the cool cars or cool house or whatever it may be. 
We do it, and Jesus, Jesus constantly calls us back to him. Maybe you keep falling for this trap, or maybe someone you know in your life that you see falling for this trap constantly. I think, how can we help them see Jesus? How can we help one another see Jesus? How do we show people what their hearts truly yearn for? And I've had many friends um, and young life leaders who showed up to help me see Jesus time and time again. Uh, one of my passions is to help people see Jesus and teach others to do the same. I think for the youth of this church, like that's something I want them to learn. Is how, how do they share Jesus with their non-believing friends? Um, I think it's not easy. There are some obstacles a lot of obstacles sometimes. I think one of my favorite parts of this story, other than Jesus, of course, is the role the sycamore fig tree plays. I often find people have obstacles to see in Jesus. In Zacchaeus' case, it was uh, the crowd that didn't let him through. But the sycamore fig tree was his help to see Jesus. I think for some people, there are obstacles, maybe shame or guilt that keeps them from seeing Jesus. Pride could literally be, I just need a ride to church or a Bible study. Maybe a barrier could be some past hurt from the church or a Christian. Sometimes I ask, could we be the barrier that's keeping people from seeing Jesus? So it a little, sounds a little funny, but I want to ask and encourage the church to be a sycamore fig tree. How can we be a church who gives people a clear view of the character and love of Jesus? Or maybe we need to climb up a fig tree to get a better look at Jesus. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to pray, and then that's all I have. God, thank you. Um, for putting the sycamore fig tree there uh, so Zacchaeus could see you clearly. Lord, uh, I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of um, this church. God, I ask that uh, you continue to encourage us and God, that we can just be a church that gives people a clear view of you, who you are and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let me just say thank you, Alan, for sharing this message with us this morning and for the courage to, to bring uh, this word to us. May, may we respond. Our first response is going to be in song. We're going to sing a hymn of uh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. So this is hymn number 352. Um, and why don't you stand with me and sing? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
church uh, not be a barrier uh, to those foreseeing uh, the love of Jesus, but maybe be like a sycamore tree, helping people to see the wondrous love of our Lord. Our benediction uh, this morning, closing blessing, is from 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, and says this, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace.